gaming news. Let's do so this. So obviously the we, big thing have of the week. week. Holy hell. PS5. We got release dates. We got prices. We got five. game release dates. Um, so I think we got so much. Yeah, I think just firstly the price of that console. I mean, it was last week where where uh, we were talking about like how Sony is in a in a weird spot now because of the of Series a S. Yeah. But man, they came out aggressive. Hey. You, they, I, I'm gonna come out and apologize to everyone <laughs> because I. I really was naysaying people, even locally, people saying like, well, maybe, okay, look, the, let's be real. Some people said, no, PS5 is going to be seven, eight grand. Like, get, yeah, get no, out of fuck here. off. It's that, not happening. That wasn't There were also people happen. saying like, oh, the digital version will have to match the Series S uh, in price. I'm like, that's mm, never happening. Yeah, not that wasn't going to happen. But even, even people who said it'll be under 10 grand, that's when I was like, I don't think so. Mm. I mean, our predictions, we said... 450 for the digital and then like maybe 550 for or what did we say i know i know yeah, we, were, we were different we did not predict what it was yeah i i um, think i said 500 and 550 so yeah but even if it came in at 450 it would have, would have been like yeah 11, i would have expected that half, yeah whatever it was yeah okay but then it was announced so internationally this price of sony is so the discless version is 399 mm-hmm. and the disc version is 499 which is just like i i am gobsmacked when they released that mm. uh, when they showed the pricing I, I could not believe it i was like it was huge this yeah. is wild and i have to believe it was a direct response to the series s and the series mm. x because when the series x came out at that price i mean let's be real a lot of people were predicting the next gen of consoles to be like no the, the technology they're packing those new hard drives everything it has to be like 590 yeah. realistically and then series x uh, Microsoft came out and said, no, it's four ninety nine, And that was like, whoa, that's mm. $100 cheaper. So just think about for Sony to match that, you think, how? How would yeah. they possibly match that? I think it's, the, I think it's <laughs> interesting because it's like, you know, they, they are matching it. It is a less powerful console. You know, how, for what, sure. what, the, what the extent of that is in real terms, we don't know mm. yet. But in raw specs, it is less powerful. But like, yeah. it's, it's got it's close enough that it's not as big of a gulf as like, or it's not the same scenario as the Xbox One launching less powerful console and more expensive. You know what I mean? Mm. The fact that they match price, I think the, the exactly. power differential doesn't really factor into that at all. But, but my thing is like the PS5, I'd almost say like envision them matching it because it's like, okay, maybe the hardware doesn't match up, mm. but Microsoft came in so cheap that it makes sense to match 499. Yeah. But the, the discless version... That's the one that caught my eye, like, yeah. The the one that... Like, if, if we think back on um, Xbox, when they released the discless Xbox, mm. it was $50 cheaper. Mm-hmm. Because I'm like, it's a disk drive. It's not... It's not like expensive. It's costing, yeah. obviously, but it's not that big a deal. But for them to say... To, to shave off $100... 20% of the price, yeah. It's it's insane. And, like, this is this is where I am now um, in the whole next gen console war, whatever you want to call it. You can enter the, you can buy into next gen for two ninety nine, which is fine. Like the the Series S, very affordable. Not taking away from that, like very very affordable console, great for entry level or even if you're just a casual gamer, whatever. Like it's there's a market for it. Mm-hmm. But if you wait or you save and you pay a hundred dollars extra, mm-hmm. you are getting that full leap into next gen with the SSD, the better visuals, everything, which is just insane. Yeah. I mean, it's. I think overseas the you know, I think Sony's price like aggressiveness was really on the digital one because I have mm. to suspect that it was only like a fifty dollar difference, like a four fifty and, no, exactly. and a four yeah. and a five hundred dollar gap. But then with the Series X pricing, they were like, we need to close that gap. So I mean, mm. hundred dollars is still a lot of money, but when you when you start really then comparing the two, because the discless PS five is no different to the normal PS five in terms of power and performance no, exactly. and stuff. So it's like, yeah. hmm, you know, you start yeah, start that- doing that math. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. It's like you you just pay that hundred dollars extra, mm. you technically getting the full real mm-hmm. deal, just minus a disc drive. Which you know, like, is that really a loss mm. for you? It depends. Some people really want to collect the physical media, but I, shit, I, I don't know. I, I'm like completely. I was gobsmacked, and I'm still gobsmacked that that's the next gen price. I do think Microsoft. Like at the time, I was like, oh, Microsoft's in trouble. But then when I thought about it, I mean, I st- I, I do think the pricing still puts them in a weird spot now. Um, but I mm. think Microsoft still has 
a lot to offer at their their low price point because you know tw- Twitter is Twitter. Everyone loves going on about like <laughs> I want the console with 120 frames and 4K and whatever. But the large majority mm. of people who are looking at the specs and using them to argue their point, you know, for getting one or the other don't even have the TVs that support those capabilities. No. And that's where the Series S starts making a lot of sense to me. It's like, yeah. it is the lowest barrier to entry into next gen and it will work mm. with the majority of what people have in their, you know, their living rooms. Exactly. And so, and especially overseas where you have the payment plan um, mm. that, you know, like you can get a Series S and Game Pass for $30 a month. It's like, yeah. Yeah, that is it's that, a that that makes a lot of sense to me. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. And even locally, it's kind of a weird thing because the Series S is seven thousand. The discless PS Five is ten thousand. Uh, ten thousand rand. So it's a big three thousand rand is a lot of money. You know, it's it's different yeah. to the jump between the ten thousand and the twelve thousand uh, for the discless and the digital PS Five, which is also a hundred dollar gap. So it mm. just shows Microsoft locally got aggressive with the Series S as well. Yeah, um, definitely. And I think if you're looking in terms of the way, you know, prices are locally, I mean, we, we've seen now that Sony, as part of the reveal, they are pushing towards the $70 price point for games. Uh, Demon's mm-hmm. Souls is going to be $70. The ultimate version of Miles Morales is going to be $70. Um, and that's already translated to games that are around like 1,400 Rand locally. So you start looking at the Series yeah. S and you go, cool, that's got Games Pass. And it's a cheaper console, you know. I think there's still, it's not a down and out situation, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 yeah, no, no. To be clear, I, I just not for one moment do I think like shit. Microsoft's out of the running. Oh yeah, definitely like, not. Not yeah. at all. I mean, the Series S is like unreal value for money. Mm. I mean. It's the, like you've just said, it's the perfect entry level into the next gen because maybe you don't have the TV or the right setup. Or you don't need it. But you yeah. can buy that. You don't need it, yeah. But you can buy that that console with Game Pass and it's very affordable. Mm. And you know for the ne- next few years at least that the Series S does pack a, a punch. Mm-hmm. It will support all the games coming out. You know, it, obviously you're losing out on exclusives, but mm-hmm. I mean... Do you really care, care for Demon Souls or Miles Morales mm. or any of the PS4 games? I mean, the PS games, maybe not. You just want to play the new Call of Duty, the new Assassin's Creed. So like, that's fine. Yeah, and it's you know, on so, there, yeah. And, yeah. I, and I say this from the perspective of someone who I've pre-ordered a PS5 and I don't think I'll, <laughs> I, I don't think I'll pre-order. You fan yeah. or you shall? <laughs> I don't think I'll pre-order an Xbox because like, I, I know for a fact that I will get a Series S eventually. Or a, a Series X, mm-hmm. I mean, but like, at I looked at the 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 launch lineup, and there's nothing on the Series X at launch that I a can't play on my PC, or mm. you know, like absolutely need a Series X for. But again, I've yeah. got a PC that costs a lot yeah. more than any of these consoles, and that's not a common, you know, a common thing. So I understand my scenario is different to a lot of other people's, and exactly. a lot of other people are like. I've got one next-gen console and no PC, and I just want to upgrade to the next-gen. What is the easiest way for me to do that? They look at oh, the yeah. PS5 digital, and they look at the Series S, and I think there's still a lot of leeway as to which way you lean in that in that yeah. scenario. Well, look, to, to be clear, I'm in the same position as you in that I'm very fortunate that I have spent the money and that I have a proper gaming PC. Mm. So I'm not missing out on anything Xbox. Like, there's yet to be a game announce where it's like well it's actually coming to xbox and not pc like that's not what the approach is mm-hmm. anymore um but it is a thing of if i didn't have the pc i would have been having a completely different co- uh, conversation because now that i have a pc i know i'm gonna go playstation 5 like there's no no discussion yeah. if i didn't have my pc though if if this generation is happening in a year or two and i didn't have my pc i'm at the point in my life where it is a thing of like well, I, am I saving to buy a property, for example? Mm-hmm. Are Lens and I going to have kids? I, I can't be throwing around big money on consoles. Mm-hmm. I would go for the Series S, mm. like definitely, because it's it's a good entry level and I'd get Game Pass Exactly, with it. yeah. So, I mean, and then like fact in what you said earlier, Demon Souls and Miles Morales, $70. $1,400 1, is like, it is a lot it's of a money. It's a lot of money. Okay. And and Sony, Sony Pass, outright said they are not coming out with a Game Pass competitor. No. Yeah. So I mean, and comparatively, Game Pass 150 random month. I can get 
like okay it's what like one six one seven a yeah. year annually I could almost get a whole year of Game Pass for the cost of one PS5. Oh, someone game. did the calculation on Twitter. They said <laughs> if, if you if you want to buy the four the four PlayStation exclusives that are on offer at launch mm-hmm. with the PS5. So that's Demon Souls, Miles Morales, uh, that that uh, Sackboy game, and Destruction mm-hmm. All Stars. So those four, those mm-hmm. four in cost are the equivalent of thirty three months of Game Pass, and th- and that's yeah. where it starts and- coming like a part for exactly, me like yeah. so this is where like the next gen is it's so interesting that it's very up in the air still of i can't tell you who who will win whatever because like we've said many times now sony and microsoft just have different approaches yeah. and i don't know which is the right approach no um but in terms of value like xbox undoubtedly i mean even the fact that they have the proper payment plan mm. is like they're making gaming very accessible to people and at the end of the day, I don't think they care about where you're playing exactly. Game Pass as long 100%. as you've got it. Like, if you're playing on PC or on Xbox, whatever, I mean, we've got xCloud coming. Mm. They don't give a shit. I mean, we, we know, literally it's... said we, are, both of us are in a position where we don't want Xbox consoles because we have PC. And for Microsoft, they're going, perfect. Because you are still <laughs> subscribing to Game Pass. You are still playing Full games on, on Windows machines. <laughs> Like they don't care. Like exactly. And and, and like you care. said, I don't know which approach is is the one that will win because Sony's come out and said we literally cannot afford to offer a service like Game Pass because it will eat into our profits too much. Like Jim mm. Ryan says, it is not feasible financially for us to do that. Yeah. And Microsoft have said Game Pass isn't making them a lot of money right now, but they're looking at the long term. So eventually, mm. there will come this point where it's like Sony is spending hundreds of millions on these first party, you know, exclusives and putting them out mm. there at a premium price and saying, you know, this is at a premium price because you get a premium product. And Microsoft is saying, yeah. we, you know, if Microsoft starts coming out with games that start rivaling that premium experience and going, it's on Game Pass, yeah. Sony is in a weird space then. Like, yeah, that, that's, that's my thing of like, we've been holding out, waiting for Xbox to put out like no offense to any games on Xbox One, but like they haven't had the the first party. Mm, it's not the same uh, lineup yeah. that Sony. It's not the same. Like call a spade a spade. But if they have come out now with this gen and they've got these these hits on the line, like along the the lines of Bloodborne mm. and God of War, then it is a thing of well, sorry Sony. Like I'm getting these premium experiences on Xbox and it's on Game yeah. Pass. Like, but look. In Sony's defense, I know they're not offering a Game Pass-like service, but I do think, I mean, along with the PS5 pricing that they announced... Um, PS Plus I don't know collection. what it's called, but it's like PS Plus... Is it PS Plus Extra? No, Collection. It is. Collection. Mm. And you get... That might mean nothing to you or me because we've played most of these games, but if you've got a PS5 and you're a PS Plus subscriber, you've got access to like 20... I don't know what the number is, but it's like 15 or 20... PS4 games, really yeah. ...really good games from PS4. And it's not just PS4 exclusives. Mm-hmm. Like, there's Mortal Kombat X there. There's Arkham Knight. There's, like, some big games on oh, there, yeah, including sure. Bloodborne, God of War. I mean, that it's not Game Pass, but that's... It's something. It's the same sort of yeah. concept. And I do think that... Not now, maybe, but in two, three years, maybe they will say, okay, well, we're putting Demon Souls on this PlayStation Plus product mm. because you know whatever i do it's, it's i do think if I, if I look at that service because i haven't really explained you know beyond the games that they showed off um how yeah. that thing will work so to me i imagine they're going okay we can't compete with microsoft and put our exclusives on a subscription service on day one but we can yeah. maybe put them there two years after the fact so like exactly. if it's like a hybrid. yeah if two years after now you get like ghost of tsushima and death stranding put on there like that's cool because if you haven't got to those yeah. games yet, you know, you sub to this. A, a, as far as I can tell, it's just like an add-on for PS Plus. So it won't be an extra cost. Mm, like, it's not an extra that's a, cost. That's yeah. a rad benefit. And I think that in itself, you know, it's not day and date, but it's it's something that they can offer that, mm. you know, inches in on exactly. Microsoft's ground there. So I mean, and, and you mean to tell me that after a year or two, they're not going to add... The last of yeah. us two goes to I definitely Death think Stranding. it like will the, be there. Yeah, the games on there now are are the hits of like two, three mm. years ago. Mm. So I, I honestly see them adding that, and I do see them at some points adding PS Five games to that. Like I think realistically they might have to, yeah. you know, to give give them that little edge, or whatever, and push people. Yeah, I, I think I think if they just keep revenue, it to PS Four so. exclusives, that would be a waste 
of that service and it will dry yeah. up very quickly. So yeah, I, mm. I imagine, I think the best case scenario for that service is like a two year lapse on, because right now they do that for PS Now. They put the exclusives on PlayStation Now, you know, a few, uh, like a year or so after the fact, but PlayStation mm. Now is not offered everywhere. So if this is a way to like bridge no. that gap, that's cool. You know what I mean? So yeah. let's... But uh, see, this is, mm? this is what I don't understand is that um, Sony, I mean, Microsoft have Xbox Game Pass. PlayStation Now is a very similar service. Yeah, I'm not sure um, why they don't offer it in more countries because of the fact that you can download yeah. the games. Like, But if they're saying like they can't sustain that sort of model, they technically have a model yeah. very similar to Game Pass. Maybe not as extensive, but I it's think there, they're just talking so about... I, 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 th I mean, the big draw of Game Pass is day and date exclusives, you know? Mm. Yeah, true. And I don't think... You know, like like we said last week, PlayStation is Sony's biggest earner. Xbox is not exactly, Microsoft, yeah. so they can afford <laughs> to take a profits hit. But like, you imagine trying to have that that discussion at Sony, being like, "Hey, you know, we're going to take our most profitable exclusives and make them free on the subscription service on day one." Like, I I totally agree yeah. with. I I see where Jim Ryan's coming from. It's like financially, they just can't. They they literally they do cannot it, yeah. do that. So, especially with the amount of money they, they're pouring into the exclusives. So, mm. you know what? It's two different no, this, philosophies, this, and I'm curious to see how they both, you know. And this, this, this brings into to question the conversation of, do you go discless? Or, yeah, as well. Yeah. You know, because as big as Sony, oh, like I was, I was telling Lenska about it, because she was saying, like, um, do you, are you going digital? Or are you going disc? And I said, I, I don't know. Like, I want to save the money now, but it might be worth going mm. disc purely because, like, I don't buy physical games hardly ever. But the reality is that as big as Sony are, they could fluff this generation, yeah. and they could they could not have a next gen console. I don't think it'll yeah, happen. Yeah, I don't think it'll it's happen. Very unlikely. Yeah. But that is a conversation of like their digital services could dry up. They could not exist, and then you've got nothing to show yeah. for it. So. I don't know. It's, it's I, I pre-ordered a disc one purely because when I went to pre-order the digital one was sold out and I was like, you well... sent from your Sony fuck. yacht. Yeah. I was like, well, fuck, I was going to go for digital, but guess I'm getting that thick boy now. Um, thick thick boy. boy. Yeah, the only thing I don't like about the disc one is that it's not so Yeah, it bugs me it so much. much. It's so, also, I, I saw, I mean, now that, now that all this information is out there, like we've got proper photos and dimensions of the ps5 that thing is so tall it's massive it is, so even when you Holy put it horizontally hell. it is just long it's a long boy like it's, it's yeah both boy. of the next gen consoles like the series x and the <sighs> ps5 are big chunky consoles and i absolutely mm. love it about them like and then the series s is this little yeah boy. it really is <laughs> tiny it's so cute it's yeah i but it's really nice i, I love i love like that it. the ps5 okay. and the the series x are just like really they like borderline big itx pc builds right now and like mm. absolutely love it i'd rather take that than the ps4 pro situation where that thing is so fucking compact and it's so loud because it can't expel <laughs> the heat like i don't gi give me a give me a pc tower that is quiet i will take that any day any day yeah um i i love the memes that have listen we, we can thank sony for the memes that have come out of yeah. this of the the loud playstation i've seen memes where it's like about to play me before playing COD with the boys. They put the PlayStation on. It sounds like it's taking Dude. off. And then the person like fries an egg <laughs> on the console. <laughs> that game when I boot up Avengers so is, good. I mean, the console I is think, unreal. Yeah, It's really yeah. something. It's so bad. And I think it, it really started becoming an issue now late in this gen. But like, it's a thing that yeah. Sony cannot repeat because it is so obnoxiously no. bad. Um, especially when this the, the Xbox One X does not have that problem. Um, so, mm. yeah. Uh, so, other quick PS5 okay. news since we spent like half an hour talking about that. Um, <laughs> That's a good conversation to have. Though. They yeah. showed off... I mean, that, that, that conference was just like games, games, games. Um, mm. Demon Souls is coming out at launch. It is on PlayStation 5, uh, exclusively on PS5. It that. looks really good. I'm super hyped for that. Um, Super the other big thing that Sony buried, uh, they didn't really say it during their conference, but like left it to be like dug up after the fact is that a lot of their exclusives are now cross-gen, which is super yep. weird considering it's their comments bizarre. earlier this year where they were like, we believe in generations, you know what I mean? Mm. Um, so it definitely looked like uh, Sony was getting cheap PR points against Microsoft who were pushing cross-gen heavily 
when in fact all of yeah. their games are going to be cross gen as well. Um, but how cheeky though, because like after the fact, I, I was shocked because I go to Insomniac's Twitter. It's like, oh hey, Miles Morales coming to mm-hmm. PS4 too, and I was like, but but they marketed mm-hmm. it as like an exclusive launch mm-hmm. title. And the one the one that really shocked me, like Miles Morales, I can kind of expect because it's like built in the same yeah. sort of engine, whatever. But then when they came out to set uh, Horizon Forbidden yeah. West, also PS4. That was game, the big like, one for me. What? Like, how? Because like, I, I could expect it I for the we games that... All in I could expect gen. it for the games that were like exclusive at launch. Yeah. But like Forbidden West is a 2021 game. So I thought by then exactly. they would have like made the cut. Like I understand it from a business perspective. And again, I think it's still mm. a good thing because like it gives people who don't have the money to upgrade you know, within the first year, the mm. chance to still play these games. So from a consumer perspective, it's great. I just hate how Sony used it as a counter marketing point against Microsoft and basically exactly. fed this fire of like cross gen is holding current gen back when they are, you know, they didn't flip the switch like recently. They knew from the get go that this was going to be mm. the case. So I just, yeah, from that perspective, I think it's like really slimy from Sony's perspective. Well, Look, it's it's those two games alone that I'm aware of. Uh, it's also, um, I think right now the only the only confirmed PS5 exclusive is Demon Souls. It's Demon Souls. Yeah. See, my thing is okay. So maybe maybe Horizon and uh, Miles Morales are like the the middle ground mm. between these two generations. But like, I I'd be even more shocked if. So God of War 2 also announced, by the way. Like, mm. we knew it was coming, but they teased it. They showed logo. God of War Ragnarok. If, yeah. if they were to come out and say, oh, God of War 2 on yeah. PS4, then I'd be like, that's no, a like, problem, yeah. You know, like, get out now. Um, but I think that is 100% a PS5 exclusive. It's weird, though, that they put the um, 2021 on there as well. I'm like, also, I don't I, I do see that happening. I not see that game yeah. coming out in 2021. I, I, I don't Although see I don't Horizon see and God say, of War out in the same year. Like, I just no. don't. I also don't see that the same year, but somebody did point out like maybe God of War 2 is going the Miles Morales route mm. where it's like a, it's a sequel, but it's not a big sequel. And I'm like, I don't could know. Could be, could be. It could be, but I, I I just, I don't know. Like God of War to me, and this isn't a knock against Spider-Man at all, but it seems to be like the, the more important franchise mm. in that sense of like, no, they need to have a standalone PS5. I'm, I'm just curious if they put out all this, I mean, if they put out Miles Morales... I mean, they are at launch. And then Insomniac said um, Ratchet and Clank is within launch window. So that could be within the first year of the console. And then they put Horizon yeah. out. And then they put God of War out. Like, that's a banging first year. Like, mm. but what no, happens yeah, in no the doubt. next two, three years? Like, that's all their temple franchises. Know. Like, hmm. I'm sure. Th- I mean, then, no, but then you have to think, like, what will Naughty Dog yeah, do that's, next? Yeah, but that's, like, the only big first-party studio that's, left with something then. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I I still don't I think don't it will all come out in 2021. I think, even no. from a business perspective, it makes sense to spread that stuff out a little bit more. Mm. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, so Demon's Souls <laughs> coming out. Um, we got another... We got a, an extended gameplay look at Miles Morales, which looks incredible like it looks like yeah that thing's I've coming to ps4 off, but fuck it looks good like i've i've just come off spider-man so i know exactly what the game looks mm. like what it feels like and let me tell you the gameplay i saw from miles morales that combat cool. looks so flashy and so and his good. new abilities like his um yeah. ability to generate like electricity and go invisible like mm. really really good uh I, I was actually thinking i had a weird shower thought the other day i was like how must Peter Parker feel about this dude? He's Spider-Man. He's mm. dope. Okay. He's really cool. One of the coolest superheroes. Then this Miles Morales dude comes along. He's got the same powers plus a whole lot of other cool <laughs> it's shit. like, why don't I like, have that? You become old yeah. school, dude. Like, you're so old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I yeah. I don't know. I'm super keen for that game. They also announced that um, the Ultimate Edition will have a remaster of Spider-Man, you know, the original Spider-Man from PS4, which will include things like Ray tracing yeah, and new cool. assets and stuff. And this is where it gets a bit confusing. Um, Spider-Man PS4, obviously, you can play it on PS5 and get backwards compatible. But Sony is not explicitly saying whether you can just upgrade your copy to, you know, the remastered uh, version without buying the $70 version of Miles Morales, which immediately is exactly the situation with Control, 
which we all know people oh, people no. shat on control for that. And, you know, the situation around Spider-Man seems identical and there's not much kerfuffle being made about it. And I think it's kind of bad. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I get that it's extra work. It's know. extra assets, extra ray tracing, you know, all that. But there's this precedent set, again, by Microsoft that that is like, yeah, this is all free. So the mind share is like, this should be free. So, mm. uh, yeah, I'm curious to see how that shakes out because that could be strange. Yeah. Um, thankfully, Weird. locally, the difference between the two, I mean, getting Miles Morales alone overseas is $50 and the Ultimate Edition is 70 But locally, the, the price difference is only 100 Rand. So to me, that's a oh, no-brainer. Okay. Just get the that's Ultimate no Edition. Brainer. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, if you're this. spending 1,200 Rand on a game, you can spend the 100 Rand more to just get the remaster, <laughs> like whatever. <laughs> Just eat too many noodles for a week. Yeah, It'll be exactly. fun. It's fun. Uh, we've got to look at Final Fantasy 16, which will be a console ex- timed console exclusive on PS5 and also come to PC, um, similar to how Final Fantasy 7 Remake uh, is doing it. Um, mm. I don't know. I I'm not huge uh, into the fancy like the high fantasy Final Fantasies. What did What did you think of that trailer? Did it didn't it's... really stir much in me, but can, it's not my type of Final you... Fantasy. So no, but look, even even as a big Final Fantasy fan, their trailers they're man, really good trailers. I don't know yeah. what it is. No, 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 look, visually the trailers are good, but in terms of tone and like trying to tell you what the game's about, they are awful. Mm. All I see, it's like very. I don't know. I can't even explain. Um, but there's something about the game. So again, as a big Final Fantasy fan, even I'm like, I don't know if I like what I mm-hmm. saw. Like I'm excited for Final Fantasy 16. Don't get me wrong, but it it's just weird because it looks like the protagonist is like vanilla protagonist. Looks kind of like Noctis with black hair, just slightly different. Similar sort of combat with the whole warping sword thing, whatever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm like, is this the same game? Is this like a sequel to Final Fantasy 15? Or like how different will this yeah. be? Like will you have party members? Is it only a single dude? Is it, t- is it turn-based? Is it time slash turn-based like Final Fantasy 7 Remake? Like there's a lot to be answered, but uh, I must admit the trailer didn't really get me excited. Yeah. But hop for a Final Fantasy 16 nonetheless because I love love the series. Yeah. Uh, I, I think Sony during the event also, they they did what Microsoft has been doing for a while now and just like making a complete mess of what exclusivity means. Um, Mm. You know, Microsoft has been at the butt (laughs) of this joke for ages, um, and rightly so. But man, Sony really fucking, like, made it even worse. Because it was like, like, Final Fantasy 16 got announced, and in big, bold letters, it's like, Mm. PlayStation console exclusive. And this tiny little text at the bottom is like, PC coming as well. And then later on, it turns out that, (laughs) oh, it will come to other consoles as well. It's just a year of exclusivity. You know what I mean? Oh um, I gosh, think my camera just so died. No, it never. Nah, it came back. It came back. Um, it did die for a second. And the same happened with uh, Demon Souls. The the trailer for Demon Souls came out talking about a PC collection, then got taken down because apparently that was incorrect. Ah, uh, it was a mis- mistake. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. Anyway, so other other things that got announced. Uh, Devil May Cry is getting a special edition that is only coming to. Xbox One and PS5 and not PC with all its ray tracing features, which wow. is very confusing Bizarre. to me. Um, yeah, not sure why that is the case. Uh, like you said, we got confirmation of God of War's uh, PS5 follow-up, which is Ragnarok. God of War 2. We got another look at Resident Boy. Evil Village, which continues to look awesome. Cannot cannot wait for that <laughs> game. That is... The, t- okay, you've played Resident Evil 4, mm. right? That little, so they yes. ended the the trailer with a dude saying like, I don't know what he said, but is that nodding to the guy from Resident Evil 4? Hell like, yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. It was yes, 100% I'm, the shopkeeper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's I mean, great. Um, also got to look at that long leaked, long rumored Harry Potter game called Hogwarts Legacy, which is like a sort mm. of Harry Potter RPG set at Hogwarts, but not with the, mm. you know, the books and stuff. Um, yeah. So yeah. That looks. I think it looks, looks cool. Looks pretty interesting. Uh, I'm curious to see what the actual story and yeah. gameplay look like. But visually, it yeah, looks visually quite it looks pretty. really, really interesting. So, mm. yeah. Um, but yeah, mainly it was just like a whole lot of updates on some existing PlayStation Five properties. I mean, we got looks at new looks at Deathloop. Deathloop looks incredible. Um, it really. 
it looks yeah. good. And the, they put in more of an emphasis on the yes. story. Yeah, it, it, it looks a lot and more like a single player game now because I was worried it was just an asymmetric yeah. multiplayer game. So But the way the way they framed that story, I mean if, if you guys haven't seen it, go watch a trailer now, it's like four or five minutes mm. long. That that sold like look, the game I always thought looked really good. But that trailer sold me and that's it's almost like um I, like a puzzle game yes. in a sense, but it's like trying to figure out how to break out of this loop by deciding how to kill targets and where and how and when. And I, I don't know how heavily they'll lean into that in the mm. story, but it seems like that is quite a crucial thing. I saw thing. someone so describe it as like a mix see. between Dishonored and Hitman and I like couldn't agree more. It's it's oh about like gosh, timing. That seems awesome. Like you've got to make sure that all these people die within the single loop and it just looks mm. awesome. Like I, I can't wait to play that. Yeah. Um, That's out like middle of next year. And that's also a timed yeah. exclusive on PS5. So mm -hmm. uh, I think, it, well, console exclusive. It's out on the same day uh, on PC, but not on Xbox. That's the only, yeah. uh, <laughs> again, words words don't uh, mean anything anymore. Language. Yeah. It's but fun. yeah, that, that was like the bulk of, of Sony's conference. It was really good, I thought. Um, I yeah, it was really very, very strong well. showing. Very happy with that. Uh, we also got... Um, news this week of Facebook uh, announced the Oculus Quest 2, which will only be mm -hmm. $300 this time. But it seems like reviews are kind of, well, I won't say mixed. There's a lot of positive reviews, but I read a review on Ars Technica, which broke down a few things, which I was like, ooh, like there's <laughs> there's like less <laughs> tracking, tracking dots on the controllers. So they say that the tracking feels a bit less accurate, while other reviews say they didn't notice oh, yeah. a difference. Um, the new strap seems a bit weird. Um, but you know, ultimately, it seems like a a resolution bump on the screens inside the thing, and that's mostly you know what changed. So I think Rush if you've got an Oculus it. Quest, I don't think you're really rushing out to upgrade. Mm. But at the same time, I'm pretty happy that this is down to three hundred dollars. As long as you're okay with the whole, yeah. you need a Facebook account to log into this thing. So yeah. Look, with the whole um, VR thing, I'm I'm glad that it hasn't fizzled mm. out. Like, there's still ongoing support for it. Because I do think that there is a space for VR gaming, mm -hmm. definitely. Um, and it's a thing of, like, when PSVR came out and all these other devices, you kind of expect them to exist, but because it's a high level to entry, a high barrier to entry, um, that it won't make it. Mm -hmm. But it seems like Facebook and all these other people are continuing to support. It's just crap that it's cool. Facebook. Like, that's the only problem. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, look, look. I don't, I don't agree with that. But just the tech itself, I'm glad to see that it, yes. it's yeah. consistently evolving. I think for $300, so, well, $300 is a good enough price that I could recommend, like, buying that thing just so you have portable Beat Saber, Beat Saber. and portable yeah. Pistol Whip and then can play Half-Life Alex if you have the PC to support it, like... Mm. Yeah, exactly. Half of Alex is worth that alone, in my view. It's so God good. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Mm, we got Splinter Cells many, coming back many. to VR. So, Splinter Cell, that Sam, that you know the oh. <laughs> that thing. Um, the Splinter Cell, you, I don't understand. So you're gonna play this game. The lights gonna come on. You're gonna lift the visor up, and then uh, what? yeah, <laughs> kept you waiting, huh? You know, <laughs> I it's fuck. I bad. just want a, a core Splinter Cell. That's all I fucking want. Like, yeah. If the VR game is oh, cool, maybe. you know, I'll be happy. But man, guys, it's been mm. seven years. I'm tired. Come on, give, come on, man. Give give, give me Sam, some food. Sam Fisher, the lovely diverse. Deserves. Yeah, give me some food. <laughs> uh we also got a mini Nintendo Direct this week. Yeah, which yeah, we did. Had some it was stuff. all third, third had, party developer I mean, stuff. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, the the headline game. There's a new Monster Hunter coming. Two to of Switch. them, in fact. Um, oh yeah, sorry, there yeah. are two. There's uh, the, what's the Monster Hunter uh, Monster next? Hunter Rise? Is it Monster Hunter Rise? Hold I think on. it is the send. <laughs> Hold on, I'm opening up an article uh, with all know, the. Monster Hunter Rise. Okay. Correct. Okay. And you, you, I laughed. You know why I remember? It's because <laughs> they had like a, a post post um, conference deep dive, mm. whatever. And the, whoever was talking, the developer or the head, whoever was like, yeah, we called it Rise because we really, the game's all about verticality mm. and like rising. I was like, wow. Mm. <laughs> you guys went really deep on the wow. name there. You know, it's so on the nose. It, it does look cool. I mean, um, you know, it's the first uh, Monster Hunter portable 
version since World, which really changed the formula, mm. like open worlds instead of segmented areas. Um, exactly. So curious to try that out. It's out in March. You also get a rideable dog, which is pretty cool. <laughs> They're also making <laughs> which is just they're making cool. you amiibo for the game and one of them one of the amiibo is the little cat thing. The Oh, yeah. Ooh, what is that called? That it's like a palico, palico that's it, yeah. Palico. Something. It's yeah. A palico. I don't even know how so I know pa- that. Palico, <laughs> palico amiibo. There was also the look the spin off, the yeah. ha- Monster Hunter Stories two. Uh, which is apparently a yeah. spin off of Monster Hunter. So It's like okay, that's cool. Cool, 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 cool. cool. Um, one of the uh, look, Monster Hunter World. I'm pretty sure it's a game I would lose 100%. my life to. Like it looks like it has th- that good grindiness. Mm. Um, that and I the enjoy. like deep combat but that you would really dig. I think. Yeah, but the only reason I've never got into Monster Hunter World is because I find it very difficult to commit to like a hundred plus mm-hmm. hour long game on my PC or mm-hmm. console. Mm-hmm. Whereas this new Switch game because it's portable, I can find that extra five minutes to an hour every here and there, and those hours do just clock Mm. up and it makes sense to play it on switch so i'm hoping it takes a lot of what it learned from well from one sense of world and it translates it into the portable experience and it it looks like it's got a lot of shared formula it looks like visually it looks pretty good and it just looks like more monster hunter Mm. so i think people have been waiting ages now for like a monster hunter on switch that isn't just because i think there was one a while back that was just a port of the 3ds one which you know good Mm. but it's still not like give us the next gen monster hunt on switch and hopefully exactly. rise will be that so that's cool um other games announced uh, during the thing so ori and the will of the wisps is out now on <gasps> switch it got announced and launched on the same day which is cool because the first one was on switch so you know if you if you mm-hmm. never had an xbox or a pc I- and you really wanted to play the sequel now you can you know what i mean and that's that's weird because when ori and the blind forest came to switch i i can't word for word remember, but there was like no, there's no indication that Will of the Wisps was. Gonna I also come recall to, Microsoft to saying at the well. time, it's like this is the last so, Xbox game on Switch for a while, and it's like exactly. Okay. And then Will of the Wisps was announced. Yeah, like, oh, well, that okay, didn't take too long. Weird. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I'm kind of shocked that it came to Switch though, because while I don't think games like that are like graphically draining, like Crisis, mm. for example, or any other game. The jump from um Will of from Blind Forest to Will of the Wisps is actually pretty significant. Like the, the animations are a lot smoother and stuff. So I don't know how it translates yeah. to Switch, but apparently the team have spent a lot of time optimizing it for Switch. That's really so, good because I, I remember yeah. it didn't run perfectly on Xbox One X even when it mm. launched. So Yeah, even I played it on PC when it launched and I had some like hiccups mm. here and there. Um, but if you've not played Will of the Wisps, let me tell you, it is well worth playing. That came out this yeah, year God, as well, which it's is crazy. Wild. It's it's just that's another yeah. one I need to get to. So, oh, it's so good. Um, also announced there was obviously Super Giants um, Hades, which Hades. launched on the same day as well. Uh, Haven't you been? Yeah, no, it? a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, cool, man. As well as a survival <laughs> game that's been in death for a while called The Long Dark, also launched on Switch. Um, mm-hmm. Fitness Boxing 2 is coming to Switch on December 4th. Sort of like Wii U Fit Boxing, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. Then we got some quick cuts on other smaller games like uh, the 3D platformer from the Sonic Maker, uh, Balan Wonderworld, is coming to Switch on uh, March yeah. 26th, along with updates on Disguise 6 and Disguise 5. Um, yeah, and that's about it. Like, that's mostly what was there. And that yeah. is it. Um, mostly it's... What other let me just see what some other, other news? news, some quick cut news here, because we, we've spoken uh, for a long Kenner time. Kenner Bridge of Spirits, delayed. Yeah, Wang. it's not coming out on PS5 delayed at launch. It's coming early 2021, which is fine. That game looks so cool. I am really mm. stoked for that game. Um... Pixar, Ghost game. Runner, yeah, this like cyberpunk, like Mirror's Edge esque game. Um, it's that one where it's like a first person parkour thing, but you've got a samurai sword in a cyberpunk world. I don't know if you've seen it. Mm-hmm. That's out. <laughs> that's out at the end of October, so that's pretty cool. Uh, very keen to see that. Uh, Fall Guys got an update which nice. remixed some of the levels, like added what they called Big Yeetus, uh, which is ridiculous. Have you played that? Oh, just I know I didn't talk about it, but I've been on and off playing four guys for the last mm-hmm. few weeks since it launched i always play after every stream like half an hour to an hour um 
that there was a severe problem with hackers in that game. Yes, like yeah, on PC. Every every second or third game, there was a hacker, and it was very frustrating because you just quit. You're not going to win mm, the game. Mm. Uh, but they part of this update, they released their first version of like an anti-cheat system, whatever, and touch with to date, I've not seen a hacker. That's awesome. Um, That's since. fantastic. Um, but those remix levels, let me tell you, they they really, really refresh the experience because now you've got the same levels, but they've obviously got some different nuances or they've been they've had some alterations, modifiers, whatever you want to call it. And it just keeps you on your toes. The game's always been fun, I found, but it's have even you been more fun. have you been yeeted by now. big eaters yet? Big yeeters is a good time. Let me tell you, if you time it right, you can get yeeted to the finish. Oh really? Line. Ooh. And, <laughs> in the some strategy. instances, yeah. It's a thing of like, if, if you fall back, you're not going to make it. It makes sense to try to get hit by the hammer. Yeah, I mean, you, you're not you're not going to win by conventional means. So you might as well just risk it all. No, you might as well just yeah. try it, yeah. So that's a good update. And I think season two is Soon. like a week yeah, or two away. soonish. With the whole medieval cool. vibe to it as well. That's yeah, cool. And some new levels. Um, That's pretty much it. Uh, there, there was a report that Microsoft, well... There was a report that Bungie apparently tried to get Microsoft to buy them and Microsoft refused because the price is too high. And then Bungie refuted the claim, but refuted it with wording that suggested like parts of the story were incorrect, not necessarily that there weren't talks for an acquisition. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. NVIDIA purchased ARM, which is, I mean, this is getting real into the weeds, <laughs> but ARM is like, is like your phones run an ARM processes and microsoft has tried numerous times to like create windows for arm so that it's not running on intel or amd because like arm for portable devices is just really power efficient really good but mm. it runs a whole different way um in comparison to like how amd and intel cpus work like the instruction set is completely different so apps just can't natively yeah. work on on arm processors um, but this is a big deal mainly because Apple has said that their next MacBooks are not going to be powered by Intel. They are moving to ARM and making their own processors with ARM technology. And it's really funny because Apple and NVIDIA hate each other. So essentially now Apple's <laughs> MacBooks are running off an, an NVIDIA product, which is very funny to oh me. My gosh. Um, but NVIDIA paid $40, mil oh, 40 billion. Forty billion dollars for this company. I mean, that's just some small. That's a lot money. of money, but ARM is like, to me, you know, a lot of people see it as the future. Um, Microsoft released a Surface yesterday, uh, last year, running on ARM, which wasn't fantastic, but it's like they keep chipping away at it, and and someday it's gonna get, you know, it's gonna hit. Um, Apple, meanwhile, unveiled a new processor called Leg. <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> get out of here. But yeah, that's cool. <laughs> so maybe maybe with this, NVIDIA will will be able to make like very powerful ARM processors with graphics capabilities that could power the new Switch. Mm. Hey, you know, something like that with hey, much with Switch much better two. battery Four life. So we'll see. 4K Switch yeah. next year. Let's uh, go. NVIDIA boss <laughs> said that ARM will stay neutral and will remain headquartered in Cambridge, where a new AI research center will be built, growing the company's UK employment in the process. So it doesn't seem like they're going to merge the two yet, but... It would be dumb not to think that NVIDIA will try and make yeah. some ARM graphics computing chip of some kind. Mm. So, yeah, that's news. 